these are commonplace, all kinds of diseases, people are slipping away, the economy is down, people can't get Folks without homes are in the streets And the drug habits, some say They just can't beat Muggers and robbers No place seems to be safe But you've been my protection Every step of the way I want to say thank you, Lord For all you've done for me Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Amen. It is good to see all of you here tonight. We have come together tonight to witness another night of Holy Week service on this Tuesday. God has blessed us all day long. He's kept us and he's made ways for us. He's done great and mighty things in our lives. And it is so good to see all 50 families gather tonight. We're expecting many, many more. So what I want you to do real quick is, if you've invited somebody, go put it in the chat. Give the names of the folk that you've invited. 
and just give a big old welcome to everybody. I know I'm giving a welcome right now, but I just want to see who you invited to come and share with us tonight. So I pray that you go to the chat, put it in there. And as our speakers come forth tonight, we pray that you send kudos, send, send your reactions. They're all at the bottom of your screen. We can take advantage of that and just let them know how appreciative we are of what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Sister Jasmine Thompson has invited her grandmother, Sister Lillian Thompson, and we're grateful to have Sister Lillian in our midst tonight. I know there are several others. Uh, Sister Carmen Goodman has invited her mother and her siblings. Hey, mother, we're glad to have all of you. Thank you so, so much for coming in to our service tonight. Sister Janet Kirkpatrick has invited Daryl Taylor. All of you that are inviting folk, come on and let's put it in the chat. We want to make sure that everybody is recognized tonight. And I want to give a shout out to Parkwood because you have been faithful last night and tonight. Uh, someone from our phone, J-W-N-I-L-2. Tony, a friend from the center. Thank you, Tony, for being here. All of you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. All 54 families that are here tonight. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Uh, Sister Harriet Mendenhall has invited uh, Tasha Hamp. Hope I said that right. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Sister Carmen, Sister Carmen's boo thing is on here for the second night. So God bless you, boo thing. Thank you for joining us. Amen. All of you, I'm so happy and so excited that you are here with us tonight. And we're excited. We're blessing God tonight for how he keeps right on blessing us and making ways for us out of no way. Sister Amy Berenger, her mother-in-law is on. Good evening, mother-in-law. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Amen. We're going to go ahead and get started in our program tonight because we want it to be so exciting that you'll come back tomorrow night and join us for another night of our Holy Week services. We have a great lineup, and from the way I see it, we're so excited about what God is going to do. So as we begin, uh, Reverend Elaine, Jacqueline Elaine Marshall. Where are you at, Reverend Marshall? I'm right here. Speak to me. I'm right here. Okay. Would you please lead us in prayer? Yes, ma'am. Uh, let, let us bow our heads. Gracious God, we bow before you this evening, giving you, you all praise, honor, and glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day that you have brought us through. Yes. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will continue to take us on through, Heavenly Father. And at the end of the day, help us to lay down, Heavenly Father, and lay down in peace and tranquility, knowing that you have given your angels charge over us. Yes. To protect us and to hold on to us. We pray that you will keep our thoughts where they need to be for this night, Heavenly Father. Yes. We pray that you will allow each of us to have an open mind so that we may hear what thus say the Lord from these individuals. Whatever you've laid on their hearts, Heavenly Father, help them to make it clear and bring much clarity to all of us, God, so that we may continue to worship as one unit, God. We thank yes. you for tonight. We pray that you bless each and every person on the um, on this call tonight and that you just enlighten all of us as we walk through this next hour. Jesus, we thank you for it all. We pray that you continue to bless Pastor Jones as, you pour, you. as you pour these ideas in her head and give her insight as to what to do and how to follow them. We thank you for allowing her to be obedient. We thank you for her being willing and obedient, Heavenly Father. So now, God, thank you for all of these things and more. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Marshall. God bless you for your prayer and how you've covered everything and everybody. Amen. Sister Jeanette Barfield, uh, she's here to support her bestie. Whoever your best is, we'll see that in a little bit. Amen. Amen. Let me just... Um, it's amazing how when you get older, you lose your thoughts. But uh, let me just make sure that all of us are welcomed and and it's just so exciting to be here. I know what I was going to say. We are encompassing an intergenerational Holy Week service, which means we are engaging and including folk from all age groups. We had a great lineup last night, Brother Charles Williams, Sister uh, Argeline Dunn and Sister Joanne Baker. And we thank God for them, how they started us off as Jesus cleans the temple. He cleared the temple and how Brother Charles told us that children, uh, God uh, uses children in his work. And then Sister Argeline told us how we are to protect uh, the temple and not to defile the temple. Then Sister Joanne Baker came back and said, uh, the house of the Lord, no, Sister Argeline said, the house of the Lord is a house of prayer and praise. And Sister Joanne Baker came and said, don't let the devil defile your temple. So we're excited tonight about what God is going to do in our lives. Again, all 60 families that are here tonight we thank God for you. Sister Barbara Boone and Sister Shirley Robertson, Robinson, thank you for joining Sister Janice Davis and her ch church family. We give God praise for you. So we're going to go ahead and start tonight, and we're going to begin with Sister Jasmine Thompson. Come on, y'all. Let's put your hands together and welcome Sister Jasmine as she comes to share what God has given her from the scripture that she has. Good evening, Parkwood family. Everyone can hear me quite well. Amen. All right. Now I'd like for y'all to just pray for my hesitant obedience and <laughs> <laughs> to share tonight. Um, I promise you y'all give me a few amens and I'll go right back on me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> So before I do start, I just want to say thank you to uh, Reverend Jones, Pastor Jones, my girl, as I call her, for the to share with you all tonight. As this is my first time standing between before you guys as a official member of Parkwood. Amen. So tonight I have been tasked with expounding on Matthew 21, 23 through 24. Um, the Bible new, the NIV version reads, Jesus entered the temple courts and while he was preaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked, and who gave you this authority? Mm -hmm. Jesus replied, I will ask, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Now, when I first read this, when I first read this scripture, I thought it to be a bit incomplete. I mm -hmm. feel like if I were to say um, verse 25, you would get full context. But as I sat in, I meditated on a little bit, thought about it, prayed about it. I realized that there is message in these two scriptures. Mm -hmm. Essentially, in these scriptures, Jesus's authority is being questioned. Um, the first thought that came to mind is, even though there are many people with position, people with power, people with what you may see as better, more authority as you, these we have got to stop letting people who are essentially unqualified question the authority that God has given us. Amen. Um, 
Now, of course, giving some further context, Jesus has done multiple things in his journey to Jerusalem on this particular week, on this holy week. And of course, this particular text can also be found in Mark 11 and Luke 20. However, um, one of the things that I also pulled from this is on your journey in life, as you figure out how how to fulfill the purpose that God has for you, whether it be from acknowledging it to finally walking in it, you have to know that there will be people who will come just to tarnish the very blessing that sits on you. All right. And everybody has to know. And some people, they're, they're not there to find out if you are actually authorized or even qualified to do what God has called you to do. They are simply there to just be people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. But we have to know mm -hmm. that there is absolutely no man who can stand between what God has for you. Amen. Um, now, we also have to realize in talking to people that even in ourselves, in self-reflection, we have to know your anointing is not my anointing and my anointing is not your anointing. Yes. How God is calling me is going to be much different than how he calls you. When your time is for in, in, in his appointed time is going to be different than when it is in my appointed time. Mm -hmm. so, with that, um, we live in a world that I believe that we look for validation from people to for our um, in our gifts and our talents and even our thoughts and the processes we have throughout the day. However, reassurance is great. Mm -hmm. we, it's okay to get reassurance, but I think that we have to come to grips with the fact that the people are going to be people and they are not always going to clap for you. So sometimes you just have to know that you are validated because God did it first. Yes. Um, and if no other reason, if you, if life doesn't tell you that, then and if you are a Bible reader, there are two scriptures that you can reference in which God did tell you. One, I knew you before you were forming your Come life. on now. <laughs> and then two, I, I, the plans that I have for you are not for you to fail. They are for you yeah. to prosper. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes every now and again, we have to, in our prayers, I've learned to remind God of his promises. Mm -hmm. Not that he has forgotten, but for him to know, I'm still on the same accord as you, and I expect you to continue to show up for me the yeah. way you're going to show up for me. Mm -hmm. So with that, and I told y'all I'm going to make it real, real quick. And if I'm under my time, love you, mean it. Um, the one thing I want you to take, if <laughs> there's nothing else that you take in this time, the little five minutes I've probably been running off at the mouth, um, you are even more than welcome to use this for other people. Mind the business that anoints you. If there's nothing else that you remember, tell people I love to say I mind my business and drink my water that's because I mind the business that anoints me I stay in God I stay rooted yeah. in the Lord and mm -hmm. those who are not supposed to be here they ain't here no more uh-huh should be here they're right where they need to be and mm -hmm. so with that as you continue through your holy week <laughs> Before you sit back and judge somebody else or even question their authority, question their anointing, question their position, ask yourself, am I first worried about me and what God has for me before I'm worried about somebody else? All right, now. All yeah. right. Thank y'all so much. Y'all be blessed. All right. Y'all put your hands together and let's bless God for this much. Yay. Amen, Sister Jasmine. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing so beautifully and so eloquently for somebody that was so hesitant to do this. God bless you, and thank you so much. And I pray that we were all enlightened from the message that Jasmine just gave us. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I see Sister Lillian's face, and it's a smile that would reach from east to west. And we thank God because she said, that's my grandbaby. And she's uh, thanking God for her granddaughter being active in the church. We give God praise for that. Amen. Thank you all for your comments. 
Jasmine, you can go back and look at it if you want to, but the comments are there. And we thank you all for blessing her and making her feel welcomed and at ease in sharing what God had given her. All right, let's get ready for our next person. One of our very own, <clears throat> excuse me, one of our young folk that is very active in the church. That is, put your hands together with me and let's receive Brother Mario Lindsay. Let's receive Mario tonight. Come on, let's put it up for Mario. Hi, everyone. Hey, Mario. Hey. Well, today, I will be reading Mark chapter 11, verses 20 to 26. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto, unto him, Master, behold the fig tree, which thou cursedest, is withered away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in, in God. For verily I say unto you, that whoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast unto the sea, and shall not doubt in the, his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have what, whatsoever he saith. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive it ye have out against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Amen. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Amen. Amen. Now, I will tell you what this means to me. In verse 20, it reminds me when a plant or tree has roots, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's dead. For example, we might see a person that looks homeless, dirty, and stinky on the street, but the person is alive, and that person may be a college graduate with all kinds of degrees that fell upon hard times. That person's mm -hmm. faith may be as strong as people that go to church every Sunday. That mm -hmm. person may have desires that God is going to bless them one day. Uh -huh. When God get ready with the desires of their heart, <clears throat> he, he will bless them. Just like Peter, we may see an old dried up fig tree in a person, but we need to think more Christ-like and pray for one another. Amen. We all have life in our body, which represents roots. Now, since our roots are still alive, our faith needs to be to the point where we can stay Unto mountains and problems, be thou removed, and mm -hmm. be Christ into the sea, and shall not doubt in my heart, but believe that God will bless us with the desires of our hearts. Amen. 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 Y'all, come on. Give it up for Mario. Give it up for All Mario. Right. Wonderful job, Mario. I see Thank your you. grandma smiling from the north to the south, but she is watching her grandson. She's watching that boy. And she's like, yes, yes, yes. Your cousin is watching. Your family is watching. Thank you, Mario, for You're studying welcome. that scripture and giving us what God gave you to give to us tonight. Somebody put your hands together again for Mario. Amen. That's one of our youth. And we thank God that God is working on our young adults and our youth, and he's inspiring them. Brother Charles said it last night, God uses children, and we know that the Bible says a child shall lead them. So somebody take courage in what Mario has said and what Sister Jasmine has said, and let's build upon that. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Moving right along as we continue in this night of uh, our second night of the Holy Week service. This is something totally new, something totally different for Parkwood. We've always done services in church on Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, but thanks be to God. Thank you, Reverend Marshall, for saying that. 
that for a vision that God has given to let's come together, even in a virtual state, we can still share and be about God's business. Amen. Amen. So let's receive, if you will, put your hands together and let's receive Sister Leah Morrison tonight as she comes to bless our hearts with the word that God has given unto her. Okay. Leah. Uh, and then do you see Leah? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay, while we're waiting for Leah, uh, I know Brittany has a playlist that she can play because we're not we're not just going to end in 30 minutes tonight because we have another one coming after Leah. So at this moment, I want to recognize our preachers, Reverend Ruby Birch, Reverend Jacqueline Marshall, Reverend James McCoy. Y'all give it up for our preachers tonight. There are other preachers in our midst. Could you just kindly turn your camera on and show your face? It is one more blessing to see Sister Mamie Laster. Mm -hmm. hey Amen. Good evening, Sister Mamie. We're waving at you as well. God bless you. Amen. All right, Brittany, when you are ready. Never loses its power. Ooh. The blood that Jesus shed for me straight from day to day it will never lose its power it soothes my doubts and calms my
on Thank and you. put your hands together for the blood of Jesus. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. We can face tomorrow because we know that our lives are in the hands of the Lord. And he lives. Somebody ought to declare he lives because I know he lives. Thank you so much, Brenda, for a blessing you have been with these songs. That was just amazing. Amen. We give God the praise and we bless his name. Amen. Amen. As tonight, as we receive our last speaker, our last message for tonight. And let me just say, Sister Leah Morrison is really, really apologetic that she was not able to get in tonight to be uh, to uh, share the scripture that she had. And she is willing to come in uh, tomorrow night. So we will allow that because I'm not gonna turn anybody away, amen. Amen. We're going to allow Leah to come in tomorrow night. So tonight, put your hands together with me because the Lord lives and because the blood of Jesus will never lose his power. Let's receive Sister Shannon Freeman. Come on and let's receive Sister Shannon tonight. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My assigned scripture is John chapter 12, verses 20 through 38 which reads, now there were some Greeks among those who went to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. Mm. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, mm. it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Mm -hmm. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. This scripture focuses on Jesus' prediction of his impending death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. As I read it to gather my thoughts, verse 27 continuously grabbed my attention, where Jesus says, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from the hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Wow, And it is, it is with that in mind that I prepare to speak from the subject, finish the race. All right. As I read the scripture, I was reminded of the Olympic marathon runner, John Aquari. In 1968, the Tanzania runner represented his country in the Summer Olympics held in Mexico City. The race was going to be 42 kilometers, which is just over 26 miles. But at 19 kilometers, just before the halfway point, John fell hard, mm. wounding and dislocating his knee and hitting his shoulder aggressively against the pavement. The winner of the race finished in two hours, 20 minutes, and 26 seconds. Medals were awarded to the winners. Most people packed up and left the stadium, and the sun then set. Of the 75 runners who started the race that day, 17 dropped out just due to the difficulty of running at the high altitudes in Mexico City alone. But John, a runner with a dislocated knee and an injured shoulder, continued to limp through the last 11.8 miles despite his injuries. Amen. One hour, five minutes, and one second after the race was complete, John crossed the finish line to the cheers of an inspired but much smaller crowd who had stuck around when they realized there was still one last runner on the course. Mm. John was quoted saying, I never thought of stopping. When asked by a reporter why he continued the race, he responded, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to start the race. They sent me 5,000 miles to finish it. All right. 
I tell this story because we have all heard of life being referred to as a race. Even gospel songs do it. Don't let my running be in vain. Running the race, finish strong. All examples of gospel songs that equate life to a race. And like a race, some are unfortunately short, like a 50 yard dash, while others are long, like a marathon. Some race courses are smooth with a very defined track, while others have hills, dirt, and gravel. Mm. But ultimately, in every race, the participants have the same goal in mind, to finish. Mm -hmm. And although sometimes like the, the race can seem long and impossible, because we all know, life be life in. <laughs> I do have four pieces of good news that reinforce the blessing, and it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Yes. The first piece of good news is we serve a mighty God. God feeds the hungry, gives strength to the weak, help to the sick, hope to the hopeless. As Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 27 says, I am God. Is there anything too hard for me? Wow. And if God is all of those things to us and for us, how dare we not have the same determined spirit as John, the Tanzanian marathon runner? Because God did not send his only begotten son for us to start this race. He sent him so we could finish. Come on, Shanna. Second, we serve a forgiving God. There are times you may go off course. But how blessed are we that if we repent and seek and accept him as our Lord and Savior, he forgives us and welcomes us back on course. This is because Jesus has already paid the price for our sins through his death on Calvary. By his stripes, we are healed and we are forgiven. Therefore, when you fall like John the marathon runner, the bandages for your knees, the cast for your shoulder, already done. And the great thing about God is he does not care how you start or how fast you run. He does not compare your journey to anyone else's. You are not racing against a single soul. You're racing for your soul. Good news number three, you are never running alone. Remember that while John limped through the last 11.8 miles of the race, most of that crowd had left and packed up their things, and people asked why he continued to run when he had no chance of winning. You may experience this in life yourself, the naysayers, the haters, mm -hmm. the well, if it were meers, the pull of the crowd that you knew before you were who you are today. Wow. But stand strong and lean on prayer, and know that the Lord has prepared you for this very hour. And if you look closely enough, there still may be that small crowd that is mm -hmm. inspired and supportive of your journey uh -huh. and stays there to cheer you on, even when everybody else has left the stadium. And as our Pastor Jones says all the time, I'll throw this one in for free. <laughs> don't forget about that crowd that you don't even know is watching, like our children that Mr. Charles spoke about last night, who you have the power to inspire and guide as they are getting started on their own races. Right. And just in case you feel discouraged because you don't have a crowd, do not worry. Because as Isaiah 41 10 reminds us, we always have something more powerful than any crowd. Because it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do Come not on, be man. dismayed, for I am your God. Yes. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you to my righteous right hand. And that brings me to my final piece of good news. In every race, Runners get a prize or reward when they win. Come on now. It is often a gold medal or a gold trophy. And so run your race, obstacles and all, knowing the prize will be worth the journey. Yes. Although at times you may look or feel tired, Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 say, Therefore, we do not lose heart. Yes. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles yes. are achieving for us an eternal glory that yes. far outweighs them all. So keep your eyes on the prize. Because I heard that songwriter say, I shall wear a crown. Come on now. I shall wear a crown. When it's all over, I shall see Gosh. his face. I believe I shall see his face. When it's all over, when it's all over. I don't know about you, but I'm going to put on my robe. Girl, and come on. Tell the story how I made it over. We're reminded every Sunday when we cite the la recite the last part of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Because in this Christian journey, glory be to God, we know for every well-ran race, the Come end on. is just the beginning. Yes, girl. Yes. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together for Sister Shannon Freeman. God okay, bless Okay, preacher. You. I see you, preacher. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am, preacher. Ahead. Amen. That is room in the pulpit, y'all. God Please, bless girl. you all tonight. <laughs> you all have blessed us tonight. Y'all unmute That's your device for a little while. And let's praise God yes. for our Sister Jasmine yes. Thomas, yes. Brother Amen. Mario Amen. Lee, Amen. and Sister Shanna Freeman. Amen. Amen. I know Sister Gwen Rainer is, is, is all over the place. Amen. I know Brother Preston Rainer yes. don't know how to act because his sister is preaching. Yes. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. God be the glory. Amen. Yes. my brother Amen. Mario and Amen. Sister Shannon. Amen. Thank that you all Amen. so much. Yes, sir. For blessing oh, us God. tonight. Amen. You have Amen. blessed us. Yes. And not only have you blessed us, you've encouraged us. Yes. 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 Our intergenerational group has blessed us tonight so much so we won't have stage fright. Ain't that right, Jasmine? We will stand even in the midst of trying times and not give up because we're going to finish this race. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Thank you all. Thank you all for your comments in the chat. Thank you all for being so attentive. Listen, I don't nobody care that that's your sister. <laughs> Thank you all for being attentive. <laughs> Thank you all for being so considerate and 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 interactive tonight. We bless God for yeah. how He is doing great things in our lives and in the lives of all those folk we come in contact with. All of us have a story to share. Amen. We may not all share it this week. We may not all share it tonight, but we all have a story to share because nobody knows yes. what we've gone through to get to where we are right now. Amen. Amen. And we bless God. We bless God for how he continues to do great and mighty things in our lives. I just want to give a shout out again to all of our guests that joined us, all of our family members that joined our presenters, all of Parkwood that invited folk. And just for you being here, you could have been in your easy chair watching and trying to get results on that bridge in, in, in uh, uh, Baltimore that was hit today. You could have been trying to get some information on that. You could have been watching uh, how President Biden and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris was here in the, the Raleigh area, had all the roads blocked, may I say, that people couldn't get in and people couldn't go out. You could have been trying to catch up on the latest sports events, but you chose to come and join in this night of Holy Week services. And we are grateful to God that you did. So much so, Sister Mamie Lester is on with us tonight. And Sister Mamie is celebrating her 89th birthday today. Somebody give God praise. I know you've already put reactions in the chat. Come on, let's bless God for 89 years for Sister Mamie Lester. Amen. 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 As we prepare to close tonight, before we close, oh, whoever did that reaction, just go right ahead. I don't know how. Y'all <laughs> see that cake falling through the air? <laughs> Y'all, technology is something, but these young Amen. minds are even better. Amen. God be the glory. Preston, Amen. be a proud brother. I don't have a problem with it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have any comments from anybody? Yes, Pastor, I enjoyed everybody tonight. 
I thought everybody was great. Praise Did a great God. Yeah. Thanks to God. all. Yeah. And I love y'all. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Vicky. Thank you, Sister Vicky. Uh, Any Pastor, other comments about tonight? Yes. Pastor Jones, I am so thankful. This is Sister King. I am so grateful. Of, of, <laughs> that you were obedient to do this this last night tonight has blessed my heart so much these messages from all of the speakers so far has blessed me i think more than if it would have been a whole lot of professional speakers praise god because they can break this word down from their heart not trying to impress anybody but trying to do what thus said the Lord. So I thank God for it. Amen. Thank you, Sister King. Thank you, Sister Vicky. Anybody else? Sister Lillian, I see your mic is unmuted. So you go right ahead. Well, I was like to say, I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad that my grandbaby, which is Jasmine, invited me, told me today, and I didn't get a chance to tell the other family members because I didn't get home too late. I just barely got on to get on. But I thank for her for inviting me and thank you all for receiving her. And yes, I'm very proud of her. And I just know you all are gonna take good care of her. And we love all of you. Everybody was good tonight. So I'm if anything I can do to help, just let me know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, Sister Lillian. God bless you. I'm just waiting on Sister Gwen Rayner to unmute her phone, her device. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I enjoyed everything. Great job, Shan. That's my baby girl. <laughs> and it's a wonderful, it was a wonderful met all the messages were wonderful. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see your big baby boy has his device unmuted. I wonder what he has to say. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey, hey, hey Parkwood and Parkwood and, and, and visitors. Uh, I thought it, I thought it was it was wonderful. Uh, so glad I, I was able to join in tonight. Uh, San Denise, you know, love your death. Did a wonderful job, and all the other speakers did a wonderful job as well. I mean, I can't. The bar's been set pretty high, so I can't wait to see what we got uh, off of tomorrow. <laughs> We're moving forward. We're gonna finish this race. That's right. Thank you all so much. Did I miss anybody? Mr. That's Miller, your device kid. is unmuted. I see that. Did you say Miller? <laughs> that one right there that spoke. Oh. Mm. Mm. So let me just say that all the speakers tonight were, oh, just excellent. Just, just excellent. But, um, but Shannon, girl, your message was right on point. Uh, you were just, your message was just extraordinary. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that picked up on that to just run that race. Mm. Thank you. It's enough to get, get people full already just to run that race. So thank Praise you God. for that word. Thank you for that encouragement. And I know that incurs a lot more folks tonight. So thank you, everybody. You all were great. You all were great. Amen. I, I would like to say something. I'm Barbara Martin from Greensboro, North Carolina, a dear friend yes, of um, uh, uh, Gwen. And uh, you, I, I've talked to Shannon maybe once or twice, but you were wonderful, very, very wonderful. And I love those uh, good news points. Amen. Thank okay. you so much. All right. It's, a, it's amazing how from Jasmine to Mario to Shannon, how they all flowed together. They did. They, they were did. all wonderful. It's wonderful. A, it just it was just so amazing. And they had no conversation with each other. It's okay. just amazing so how amazing. they all yes. flowed together. Yes. And it Amen. gives us so much to look forward to. We don't have to try to be like anybody. Thank you, Jasmine. And, and 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 as Mario stated, all we got to do is trust God, right. forgive others, forgive yourself, and keep on running the race. That's right. Thank you. Blessings to everyone.
God bless you, sweetheart. Thank you so, so much. I don't want to overlook anybody. Brother Charles Williams, I see your device is unmuted. Yes, uh, I don't really have anything to say. I just want to say kudos to all of those who presented tonight. Wonderful job, everyone. Amen. Thank you for your message, and I will take care of that. Thank you. All right. Um, as we prepare to close tonight, thank you again, everybody, for joining in. I think uh, Sister Harriet Mendenhall has probably jumped up and down about 15 times <laughs> in her house. And, and Brother Jeremiah, if you can't keep her still, just give me a call later. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you all so, so much for just joining in and, and just- I'll and, be and calling in just a little while. <laughs> thank, thank you, Brother Jeremiah. Me too. Okay. Tonight, tonight, um, let me just, I know some of you may already know, some of you probably have already heard that Miss Vine's son, Alfonso, passed away today. So let's keep that family brother. Um, Woodrow. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Woodrow Clifton. Let's keep uh, he and his family in prayer. Uh, as they go through this ordeal, I did talk to Jada today, uh, and and they were at the hospital. And let's just keep them in prayer. Again, we ask that we continue to pray for Sister Cynthia Moorhead, uh, the Macaulay family, Brother Clarence and Ruby Strain, Sister Dakota Bostic, uh, Sister Peggy Handon, my daughter-in-law. Sister Teresa Jones, and if there are others before we close, and as we prepare to close and while you're gathering your thoughts, if there are others, I'm going to ask Reverend McCoy to prepare to give us a prayer tonight. Let me just thank, we had 69 families listening to all these messages. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. 69 families. That is amazing. Yes. Reverend McCoy. Reverend McCoy also has death in his family. His niece passed away and we're also lifting him and that family up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, Reverend McCoy, if you would lead us in prayer, and I'll be back with benediction. Amen. Heavenly Father, most gracious, loving, and forgiving Father, we come tonight thanking you for all that you do and all thank that you, you will continue to do. Father, we thank you for how you used our young people tonight. And God, we just continue to give you glory during this holy week as we walk with you to the cross and, and and get up on Resurrection Sunday as you got up and lived the same way you lived. So God, just keep continue to bless us, continue to move, continue to bless, bless our sick, our bereaved. Bless every person on this phone tonight, God. Uh, we could have been anywhere, but we chose to be here. But we want to hear the word of the Lord. For God, we love you. We adore you. And we thank you for all your many blessings. And thank you, God. And if we have a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Mm. But with one tongue we have, God, we give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. We say hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name. We thank you once again. Now, please, Lord, before we, as we prepare to leave this place, but not your presence, allow your angels to watch over us tonight. So when we sleep, we'll have perfect sleep. And when we rise in the morning, we'll know we've been in the presence of a holy God. And I think God, we thank you. We adore you. And we love you. And all the saints of God said amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend McCoy. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much for leading amen. us in prayer. And to all of us tonight, again, God bless you. Come back tomorrow night. Join us tomorrow night for another 
night, as Reverend McCoy said, as we walk toward the cross in this Holy Week service. Amen. Amen. Now, may the grace of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all now and forevermore. God, continue to empower us with your word so that we can be the laborers that will go forth into the harvest to tell men and women that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he lives and he lives within us. Have your way, God, Thank in you. all of our lives. Forgive us of our sins yes. in Jesus' name. And together we all said, Amen. 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 Good night, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless Brother Proof, you don't even have to talk. I see your smile. <laughs> God bless each and every one. Have a good night. Bless you all. Night, night. Good night. Good night. Have a good night.